Okay, sorry. So you're playing with your best mates. Um, your time period for for uh, your rugby career is, is is only really limited. So, and and more so if you are, are looking at being a rugby player for your career, like a real realistic um, situation, then you're going to want to move to where uh, the best rugby is played, or to where you you can learn. Um, better rugby at a higher level with better coaches basically that's what it is so for me if a player wants to leave a school because they want to get better at rugby and something that they really want to do for the rest of their life then move it doesn't matter to me if a, if a player a rugby player wants to move to the league because that's what they like being they feel like that's their sport then do it it's fine like I, I have no problems with it like I'm always for the player the player is going to Basically, get a free education, a different outlook, or, you know, like a different perspective because the the basically the kids around them are probably going to be different as well, and moving to different parts of New Zealand, things like that. So, like for me, it's it's going to be with the kid. If he wants to move, move. It's better for the family financially and things like that, and opportunity wise, then move. I have no problems with it. Um, and I understand how how. Uh, school programs, uh, rugby school rugby programs get hurt by the fact that they have players leaving. But the thing is, is that you're a school. You're going to be there for years and years and years. The players only got so so few years playing rugby at school and even playing rugby in life. You're still going to be around in a hundred years. So like I was with, with the rugby program, the first team program that just recycles kids over and over again. So I don't believe that you should get so angry. It's just like okay, if he wants to leave, let's respect the kid and the parent, and then just move on. We'll find another kid within a year or so as well. Anyway, the kid's career is more important to me than the school itself thriving on a rugby program. And that's to me, that's as simple as you can really put it. And I, and if you don't, uh, if you if you disagree with what I'm saying, then that's cool. That's up to you. Um, the other question I got was, why do I do this? And <laughs> why do I do this? And I don't even get paid for it. This I I do this because there's too much talent in New Zealand and too much kids with um, not so much low self esteem but they don't have no self belief um, they have no self belief with uh, the talent that they have they kind of think that they're good just for their area but some kids don't know how good they are nationally. And then when it comes to after school, they think, oh, no, nah, no, nah, I can't make that rep team. No, nah, I can't do this and I can't do that. But it's like, bro, you're a lot better than what you think you are. So don't try and give up on the dream and try and uh, you just like, oh, no, nah, jokes. I, you know, I wasn't trying to be a good rugby player. It's like, well, you don't wake up five o'clock in the morning to not be a good rugby player or you don't do extra trainings to not be a rugby player. Just put yourself out there, go and train and, and you have that talent to be there. And like, if people want to select you, let them select you. Let them, let them put time and effort into you, and then you just lap it all up, take it all in, use it all, and then ride it out as as long as you can. That's the way I see it. I do this because too many kids after school fall through the gaps. So my thing is this: like, if I can get kids noticed, not just within their own region or their own area or their own province. And other provinces can also look at my page and look at players and be like, well, we need a player like that. We don't have someone like that in Manawatu. We don't have someone like that in Hawke's Bay. We need, a, we need a kid like this up here in Auckland. We need, a, you know, we need that kind of player down in Invercargill. Then at least that kid has options to move. If they're not wanted by their own union or province, they can just move away to somewhere else and, be, uh, and, be, and not be a liability somewhere else and be a real asset to some other union. And things like that happen all the time. So if if I don't if I don't shine light on other people on people's talents around the country, then nobody else knows about them. And that's the way that I see it. You know, uh, recruiters and scouts and stuff, they are hired for their team. So they do the best for their team to recruit for their for their region or their union. But like that's not really my stand on thing. My stand is just like, well, I'm there for the kid and I'm going to um, show New Zealand uh, how good these kids are. And if your province doesn't want you or your union doesn't want you within your area, 
then hopefully someone else does. But I'm going to do as much as I can so that that kid gets a bit of a shot at, at where, of a say of where he wants to go. Um, I think that the high school level of uh, the first 15 is now the how do I say it? Is, is now the uh, the main place of where you find players. It's not really club rugby anymore. It it is it is in the first fifteen rugby. I like look how many first fifteen players that have been from my top two hundred was over the last three years are all playing super fifteen now. Like and Damian McKenzie is, is probably going to be the first all black selector. That was part of high school top two hundred. That's massive. That's massive for him and that's massive for my Chiefs because hey, I'm a Chiefs fan. I love it. I'm I'm fine with that. You know, Akira and that will probably be next and you know we still got Atu and all those kind of fellows as well. But I feel like if you can make a splash in, in high school at first fifteen and then under twenties and, and even and I'm just, and I'm not just talking New Zealand under twenties. I'm talking Samoa under twenties, Tongan and Fijian. Make sure that you guys who are Samoans, Tongans and Fijians that are playing in New Zealand, when you leave school, if you're not considered for New Zealand, go to Samoa, Tonga and Fiji and then try and get into the under-20 program. It gives you a better CV. It gives you some rugby experience. You get to travel. Like, look at, uh, uh, look at Jared Adams from Wesley. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of them, Jared Adams and, you know, Darren from De La Salle and, and uh, who are those other guys? Uh, Freaking uh, Ilya from, uh, you know, St. Thomas down in uh, Christchurch. Like, all these guys in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe playing for Samoa under-20s. And they're playing around with elephants and looking at lions and stuff like that. That's cool as hell. Of course you would want to go do that. So, like, you fellas who are all, you know, um, Samoa songs and Fijians, look at your under-20s as, 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 like, another avenue to to play more rugby, play better rugby. And if you get picked up overseas, weigh up your, your options and then either take it or not. But make sure you know what your options are. At least have some options. My my website is about giving you options so that you don't just have one place to go to because you just feel like, oh, that's the only place I can go. Let's have three or four, like something like that. Okay? Um... Uh, and honestly, I love I love what I do. Like I am trying to get money. Like if I haven't traveled to your area, I'm sorry. It's not as easy as you think. Like come down and watch me. I would, honestly, if I could fly to every place, you know, four or five times a week, just to watch you guys play and and, and search out players and things like that. Man, I'd love to do that every single week. Hell, I'll come down and watch trainings if I if uh, if I could get there. Because I like I like trainings because I like listening to the players. I like um, seeing how they act within within their training and how many guys mess around and how many guys don't. And, um, and you know, you, you always got those fellas that, that laugh and joke around in training and they think it's all funny. But then at the same time, there's other players that are thinking, can you stop laughing? Cause if we get smashed this week, there's not going to be funny. Like that bus ride is going to be a really long bus ride home. You know, and then you, you kind of like think back to those kind of things. And so, uh, you know, kind of, you know, take it serious, man. Like, um, and I know I, I kind of uh, had a go at St. John's um, Hamilton this week. And it was just more disappointing, you know. Like, it's, it's just kind of just disappointing because um, if you're going to mock and humiliate a team, like, oh, I'm just not for that. Like, you know, give them that respect as well. If they're playing hard, give them that respect that they're playing hard. And don't ease off and play around and, you know, do stupid stuff and laugh on the field, make jokes and whatever. Because... There's also parents that have traveled a long way, and then you're also kind of disrespecting them at the same time. I just feel like you give them that same respect as well. Um, another one is, um, what was the other questions that I had? I think there was only questions, really. Um, well, the only good ones, like, you know, people, like, telling me stupid questions that, you know, I'm not going to, it's funny, but, you know, I'm not going to answer them. Um... This week, uh, the games, uh, please go down and, and get to these games. Um, that quad that is on this week, if you're down in Wellington, go to those games. Massive games. Like, oh, I wish I could go. I'm starting to look at grab a seat and seeing how many, how many games I can get to in a week. Um, 
the curtain. Oh, uh, but yeah, if you're at Caracas at twelve thirty, that's um, uh, Sacred Heart in Saint Paul's, Sacred Heart number eight, Saint Paul's number twenty, at Caracas at twelve thirty. Also, the curtain raiser for the Chiefs and the Sharks down in Yarrow Stadium, uh, Francis Douglas um, versus Saint Peter's Auckland. And Saint Peter's have only just got their team together, um, and, and so I know that. The results haven't been as positive, but they are getting it together. And they're going to give Francis Douglas a good go as well. Francis Douglas has a young team that's rebuilding. So that that's that, that actually feels really good too. They had a hit out against De La Salle, which, um, which is a massive... Like, if you go to see these games, they're like really good, the De La Salle and uh, Francis Douglas ones. Um, it's like a two, a good two-sided battle of, you know, um, De La Salle's just massive attack to... Just the grind out wins that Francis Douglas. This is just like that new Plymouth thing that they do. Um, uh, again, Hastings and Hastings and St Paul's Collegiate uh, Taupo. Um, I forgot what the z- reserve place is called in to- in Taupo, but um, uh, I don't have the time for it yet. But I will get the time. Christchurch and and Marlborough Boys. That is going to be a big game, and it's in Christchurch. So make sure you go to that. I think more of the games are at twelve o'clock. And I bumped up Christchurch to number 13 at the start of the season, even though I had them ranked a bit back. But they have a really big team. And they... It sounds like I was going to start singing Drake in future. They have a really big team. They have um, a big forward pack and, and a bigger forward pack than they, they actually usually used to. Um, and, and Melbourne have a really old team. They, they, there's a lot of year 13s in there, so they, they all kind of know what they're doing. They, they, they're not really shocked at the, at the pace of, of the game at first 15 and, and the physicalness of first 15 as well. Um, the Wellington one, Wellington's ranked number 14 and playing Fielding. Fielding also have a, sort of a new team, but they have a really good back line. And if Wellington are going to win this, which I think they are, those forwards in Wellington are going to have to really manhandle the fielding guys to get their edge over fielding. And they have to, they have to, the forwards have to be going forward and they have to rip into these fielding forwards for their backs to get a flow on their game. If, if they don't win up front, I think the fielding backs are going to be, up, they're going to be playing a lot of gaps, playing a lot of angles. And um, I don't know if the Wellington College backs can sort of keep up with that um and so like for me the wellington forwards like the yeah wellington wellington backs if they're going to be playing on the back foot all the time because the forwards can't win up front then um i think fielding might um you know just win it by a couple um in the end wesley college and dilworth is just the one that i'm going to and i think it's at 11 o'clock and I'll be at the Wesley and Dilworth one. And then I'll be going over to Ongehanga and Tangaroa for that game as well at 2.30. Um, but Wesley and Dilworth is a good one. Wesley is ranked number 15th in the country right now with a good young team, a massive forward pack. I'm looking for the Twins to have a massive game, Siwa and Fui and, and you know, um, uh, Wetet is going to, I hope he plays too. Uh, Christ College. I know a lot of you guys are surprised at Christ College. Well, please go and watch me against Burnside. Burnside's pretty good too. So um, that should be a good game. Um, and other ones, uh, they've got Odahu and Liston on TV. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, any other questions that you guys might, uh, uh, that you want to ask, ask me, and then I'll make another one of these videos, and then, um, yeah, I'll answer them as much as possible, and then I'll kind of give little previews and stuff like that of the games coming up but um yeah uh thanks for listening it's high school top 200 herschel peace